Okay, I wanted to put in just a special topics and I want to talk about three things today. The first is about relockers, which is what this is. The forbidden zone, which is a few numbers you're not allowed to put the last digit of your combination to. Otherwise, you can mess up the lock, you won't be able to open it. And the third one is I want to talk a little bit more about the fly, which we've already talked about. That's this little pin that moves just a little bit. I want to talk a little bit about why that moves. So let's talk about the relocker. So you can see the relocker is here and here on this lock. And it's super duper simple. All it is is, is it's just a, a little piece of metal on, on a spring. So it's always sort of wanting to come down into this closed position. And if you look closely in here, you'll see that there is a little hole. And this, this little bit goes into that hole. You can see it again on here goes into this little hole here. And if this is in the down position, you won't be able to move the bolt. It physically locks the bolt in. It's a pin that goes into, into the little slot in this big bolt. You can't move it. And the reason why it's here is that a common way that you can attack a lock, um, normally this hole wouldn't be here because this is a cutaway lock, but it would be on like this. And you could bash off the dial and then you have the spindle or you could put a screwdriver or something through there and then bash off the or break the lock and bash off the back of the lock and obviously if you physically damage the lock like that perhaps you'll find the the um the lever just allows you to open the lock um, so the, the security for that is on the back plate which is which is part of the lock it actually is breakaway. You can see it more clearly on here, but you see this line? That's so if you are bashing at this, this area right here, um, with the because the spindle goes through the door of the safe, you would hit the back of this lock and you would just break it off. That just that part of that part's very easy to break off, much more so than the rest of it. What will happen is normally the back holds this down. And as soon as that back of the lock breaks off, boom, it, it fires. And the relocker will make it so that this bolt won't open. So that's what the relocker does. It's a very simple safety countermeasure for the lock if you bust out the back of the lock or if you attempt to damage the lock. And that would be normally through the dial. Someone could pull the dial off and then bash the spindle through or bash a screwdriver or something like that through. But the what will happen if you do that is the back of the lock falls off, the, the relocker fires, and this bolt right here, it's being held in by this pin that goes down, and the, that's not opening. So that's a big safety. That's a big safety feature. Let's talk a little bit more about the fly. I've already talked a little bit about it. You can see it's just here. It just moves a little bit. And the, but the pin on the back or the pin on the on the cam do not move. They're fixed. But if you look at this, you can see that this pin right here does have some thickness. It's not like a like the end of this pencil. It's got thickness. And same with the fly. If we look at the fly here, it's also got some thickness. So what would happen if this was fixed in a certain location? If it was just fixed in this location, just like that, it didn't move, it wasn't allowed to move, it was just fixed in this location. So the lock would still work, but there are few problems with it. It's not as nice. For one thing, you can't, these, these distances, if you look at the sort of the distances on the dial, they're very close together. So this kind of distance, this close to the center of the lock, that's just that little piece right here. And there's two of them is several numbers. So that means you couldn't have numbers that are too close together. The second thing is a bit more important just in terms of dialing. And if you think about it, let's move this up here a little bit more. 
if you are if this is a circle and you're move you're moving your we're moving around like this in a circle and these are the two the driver pin and the fly um, and I'm moving this I'm moving up like this and I'm moving the second fly into position the pins moving the fly into position if I were to come all the way around the lock so I'm back on this side if I do one complete revolution I have to move that other the fly quite a bit to get when I do one ro one full rotation so you can see if I have something fairly thick rotating and it is pushing in this direction actually pull the cam off here and I'll show you so we got a pin on here and a fly on here when I move this I move move this so that it is now push the pit the driver pin which is in the cam is pushing against the fly down here you can see if you look at here where this this is if i do one complete revolution it's now trying to move it again but this thing has moved from this one when i was pushing it in this direction it's as full this way as it'll go and then when i come back around it moves back so that's just it just helps to make the comp the, the lock work a lot better you can have numbers on your combination closer together and also you can um, when when you dial in either direction you you get the same number so if you were to turn the dial to the right to say 50 then this 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 cam this um, gate would be in the in a, in a position say it's at this position if you dial all the way one way and then you end at 50 it could be in this position and when you turn it all the way the other way several times and finish at 50 going in opposite direction this is pretty much going to be in the same position so you can do it either from the left or right if there wasn't a, a movable fly here then your then it would be when you move it in one direction relative and then moved it back you'll find you get a different reading on it um because these pins you, you're pushing in different directions so it's just something if you ever see look inside a lock you'll see these movable flies and go why is that move and i just wanted to go through that if you look at your locks instructions you're not allowed to set the final number to uh, uh, there's a set of numbers you're not allowed to set your final number in your combination to that's the final number is the wheel three which is the top wheel and you're looking at it from this direction and it's the one that's um for the cam first engages with and i just want to quickly mention why you're not allowed to do this you don't have to worry about it all these special topics aren't super important but if you remember when you are entering in and you're allowing the um let's open this lock here this is has lock hasn't been set the combination of this lock haven't been set so it's all set at 50 which is usually the default when i allow the drive pin to come in i then have to continue turning to actually have the, oh, the rear lockers fired because i got the back off this one on the safe that I'm usually showing you, I've removed the relocker, but I have to actually push down on this. Otherwise, the relocker won't allow me to open the lock. But you can see um, I have to continue turning the cam when to op to actually open it. So if the final number was actually in the same location, basically where the cam, if this the final number was here. I wouldn't be able to maneuver the lock because if I moved it too far the other way, I would knock the gate out and I wouldn't, and the lock would, the fence wouldn't be able to drop. So it would, the lock won't enter. And if I turn it the other way, what will happen is the cam will be attempt while I'm trying to actually open the lock when I'm sort of in this, doing this, this motion to actually open the bolts. What will happen is the cam will pick up the top wheel wheel number three and it will attempt to move it 
At the same time, it's trying to open the lock, which will cause, which means that the top wheel, wheel number three, will start pushing up against the fence. And that's just going to cause all sorts of problems because now the lock's trying to lock itself at the same time it's unlocking itself. So that's what the forbidden zone is, and that's why you can't put the final lock on it. They're usually like on um, on the lock in, in the safe I'm showing you, the S&G, it's only about five or eight numbers you're not allowed to sell it, set it in, which is right in, in, in this area here where, where, the, where the nose drops in. So it's not a big deal, but that's why you can't do it because when you attempt to actually do the final bolt pull with the, with the, um, once the nose is dropped, then you're trying to do the bolt pull that you'll be actually attempting to move the top wheel. And then you either knock the wheel out, in which case the, the gate won't fall, or you'll have to be attempting to move the wheel so that it is pushing. Remember the, the gate, the gate is, is allowing it in. But at the same time, you're going to be rotating that wheel and it's going to be pushing up against the gate. So nothing will move. The, the lock will just seize and won't be openable. So that's what the forbidden zone is.